Good afternoon, Mount Calvary Baptist Church family. My name is Anaya Rice, graduate of Northwest High School located in Germantown, Maryland, and soon to be freshman at Colorado State University. On behalf of all graduates at this wonderful church, and especially the high school graduates, we are so grateful that you have decided to participate with us in our 2020 baccalaureate service. We praise God for your passion and dedication to youth. This is seen through our programs for youth, such as youth church, mission programs, Sunday school, scholarships, and this very baccalaureate service, where we celebrate and commemorate high school graduates, undergraduates, graduate students, and graduates from professional schools. We are truly thankful for your prayers for our spiritual and educational journey. Again, Mount Calvary, we offer each of you our sincere appreciation for not only being here today, but being there for us along our entire journey. We rest in assurance of knowing that you'll continue to pray for us continuously. Thank you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord strong and mighty. He, he is the King of glory. Let us pray. O oh, great King, our God, how we thank you for this day. A day that wasn't promised to us, God. A day that we could not have seen coming. But God, we're so grateful, grateful that in this day you allow us to celebrate your children. The children that you have given to us to raise and to educate to train to prepare God and we are here with them today to celebrate them God we thank you for lending them to us we pray God that we have done all that you would have us to do we pray now in this time that as we celebrate them that we would glorify you bless this time that we spend here today and use it for the building of your kingdom in Jesus name we pray amen Good afternoon, church. Today's scripture is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sue. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Now is the time of celebration, sending our prayers to God for his marvelous work in all of us. May the Lord bless the reading and application of his holy word. Good afternoon, church. I'm Luna Kennedy. I'm a graduate from Boonesboro High School, which is located in Boonesboro, Maryland. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for keeping everyone safe during these trying times. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to recognize our fellow graduates. Even though it has been a tough year, I'm praying that you'll continue to bless us and guide our footsteps as we prepare for our futures and whether it's entering into college or workforce. For you are our strength, and in you alone is our hope and faith. As we go our separate ways, may we never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good evening, church. I'm Shazam Palmer, and I am here to present to you the class of 2020. Mount Calvary family, I am overjoyed to present to you the Mount Calvary Baptist Church High School graduating class of 2020. Yay! Good afternoon, Mount Calvary. I'm Anissa Bryant, and I'm here to present to you the class of 2020. I want to give thanks to God for his many blessings and providing me with a loving family that supports and guides me on my life's journey. In the fall, I will be attending Townsend University to earn a degree in nursing. My advice to current high school juniors as you enter your senior year is to not procrastinate, to manage your time, and to pursue your dreams. 
Good afternoon, Mount Calvary family, friends, and guests. My name is Anaya Rice, graduate of Northwest High School in Germantown, Maryland. I wanted to give many thanks to God and my loving and supportive family that have guided me on the path I am headed today. I'm extremely grateful to have had access to the myriad of opportunities that were available to me. And I can't wait to see where those opportunities will guide me next. In the fall, I will be attending Colorado State University to earn a degree in zoology. Then I'll be going on to vet school to become a veterinarian. To the class of 2021, my advice to you as you enter your senior year is to start off strong and persevere through the end. It's your last chance to make a mark on your high school success, so make it count. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mount Calvary friends, family, and guests. My name is Nina Kennedy. I am a graduate from Boonesboro High School, which is located in Boonesboro, Maryland. I want to give special thanks to God for giving me the opportunity to even be here in the struggles of high school. Um, in the fall, I will be attending Penn State to earn a degree in biomedical science. And my advice for class of 2021 is to earn a lot of scholarships, try to finish and start strong. Well, Calvary family, I am ecstatic to present to you the college graduates. Please continue to pray that they will follow on the path that God has in store for them. Mount Calvary family, I am absolutely thrilled and delighted to present to you the master's candidate and the Joris doctorate candidate. Praise God for the awesome things that he has done and is continuing to do in our lives here at Mount Calvary. Hi, my name is Monica Dewberry, and if you did not know, I just graduated from McDaniel College this spring. It's been a long four years, but I've grown so much during this time, and I've become a completely different person than who I was in high school and even freshman year of college. I've become more mature during this time and also become more in tune with who I truly am than ever before. I thought I'd take this time to give some advice to all of you that have just graduated from high school and are moving on to the new world that is college. Even though there is a pandemic going on and the overall school experience is a bit different right now, I hope that you can still take some of my advice to heart and use it to make being at your new school seem a bit less scary. My first piece of advice is to be yourself. Obviously, you can always change up your style or what you like and dislike if you find something new that you're into, but make sure that you're doing it for your own enjoyment and not to fit in with someone that you'd like to be friends with. I honestly... I personally have changed a lot these four years. I honestly feel like I'm a completely new person now. I have a newfound sense of confidence, and I've been more interested in showing my personality through my retro thrifted tees and bold patterned sweaters. Being in a new environment, being more on my own, and also not having to wear a uniform daily anymore left me to be able to find myself without feeling like I need to be like everyone else. 
College is also a bit different than high school just in general, since people don't care as much about what you're doing since everyone is on their own paths. McDaniel is an extremely small school and sometimes has high school energy to my friends and I, but even then, even if you recognize someone by face that you have also never spoken to before, they most likely won't even notice or care about that thing you've been wanting to try out or wear. <clears throat> Another tip is to make long-lasting friends. Just like in high school, your group of friends will naturally wax and wane through these years, but don't let that discourage you. In freshman year, I was in this gigantic group chat with about 15 people from my year in it, but now I only talked about five people who were in it before the chat became inactive. I also have an even closer core friend group that I've had the amazing opportunity to live in an apartment with this school year, well, before we all got sent home mid-March. I'd say to think about what type of person you'd want as a friend and if they'd be beneficial to you in the long run without being a bad influence in terms of the, your grades or the way that you'd portray yourself to the other students and professors around campus. Similarly, understand what traits a positive friendship has. I've been bogged down by a few people that only thought of themselves and brought everyone else's mood down through their actions, which held us all back as a result. People in college are usually super friendly though, so this would be the minority of people that you might meet around your school. How you make these friends is all up to you. An easy, way to join, an easy way is to join a club or be on a sports team, but I've met new people in interesting ways. I've also made friends that I still talk to today through people that I already knew, so just be open to trying new things and taking spontaneous trips with others that you've gotten to know. Who knows, they could become the people that you live with during senior year, just like how my friends had become. Lastly and most importantly, I would say to work hard, as, work as hard as you can and try your best in your classes so you can get good grades. I wouldn't say college is too much harder than high school, I mean generally, since depending on your major it could get quite difficult, but it does have some higher expectations than what was expected back in high school. Your grades not only matter just to pass the class, but it also is even more important because it shows how well you understand what you are learning about your future career choice. If you just skip a bunch of classes and do the bare minimum on your assignments, think about how that will hinder your future opportunities and most importantly, your own confidence about what you wanna do with what you're learning. If you need help with anything, you can always ask your professor or advisor depending on what the topic is. Just because you're not in high school doesn't mean you're forced to do everything completely on your own now. I can't speak for all schools for this, but my school also had a group that would help you if you had a disability that hindered you from being able to learn or live on your own. Your school most likely has something pretty similar too, so search for that if you need some extra assistance in that aspect. Just know that in general that you are never alone. You not only will have future friends, professors, and your church family that will support you in your journey, but also God who will keep you on the right path if you're feeling unsteady. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Being, a completely, being in a completely new part of your life may seem scary at first, but with all these people being behind you and backing your educational experiences, know that you are loved and prayed for. Congratulations, class of 2020. My name is Ayana Dow and I am a graduate of Washington University School of Law, where I received my Juris Doctorate degree. Law school has been some of the most difficult, but also most fulfilling years of my life. And like many of you, I have dreamt of this very moment. The last semester of law school is when you finally have it all figured out. For what seemed like the very first time, I knew exactly what I needed to do, and also what I could get away with not doing. But instead of being able to take advantage of that hard-earned knowledge and coast my way to graduation, we have all had to deal with new and unexpected challenges. But we have persevered and we have succeeded. Though we never envisioned it quite like this, I want to tell you all that the exact circumstances of this very moment neither discredit all of the work we have done so far, nor does it define the good that is to come. We have all worked incredibly hard, and moments like this do not happen by sheer luck. No matter how many times we ask ourselves, how did I get here? Throughout law school, I found myself reflecting on what it has taken for me to get here. And while it can be overwhelming, 
I encourage you all to take a moment and do the same. Each person's path has been different, but the endpoint is all the same. We are officially graduates. I imagine that many of you might be with the very people who set you up for success right now. So I want to say thank you to everyone who has encouraged and inspired us. I want to share one lesson I learned while I was in law school. During my second year, I spent months upon months applying for jobs and to no avail. In law school, your second year summer job is almost always where you will begin your career as a new lawyer. And to make matters worse, you're expected to have that summer job offer in hand an entire year in advance. I remember praying so hard during my job search, and I want to say a huge thank you to my mom for keeping me sane during that hectic time. I spent hours every week on campus in the Career Center. One day, I finally went to one of my mentors to ask when I could finally stop applying. Her response was, I don't know, but all I know is that you just need one yes. By the grace of God, I got that one yes a month later, and that one door opened, which led to even more opportunities. In these moments of uncertainty, let me offer some certainties. You are ready for the challenges you will face. You have the tools. This community, your friends, your family, our Mount Calvary family will be behind you, cheering you on every step of the way. I don't know where each of our future careers will go but I do know all of us have what we need to get to the next step. There are a million ways to define success. For me, I hope to be the reason that someone else chooses to go to law school, especially if that someone thinks that the legal profession is not for them, whether it's because it neither looks like them nor carries their background. I encourage you to adopt this marker of success and to consider whose voices your future careers can amplify. I cannot wait to see what you all will accomplish. Congratulations, class of 2020. We did it. Uh, hello, my name is Christian Campbell, um, a graduate of Duquesne University, and the poem I will be reading is called An Ode to Pittsburgh. When I first came to Pittsburgh, I was anxious. Anxious about the massive hills I would have to climb. Anxious because I knew not a single soul but my own. Anxious about the aggressive wind I had seen knock people down. Anxious because I didn't know if Pittsburgh would become a home. All the while, I was hopeful. Hopeful that all my anxieties could be overcome. And they have been. I have not only walked up and down the colossal slopes of Mount Washington, I have also trekked up personal mountains I thought I would continuously fall down, like Sisyphus' stone. I have not only met incredible individuals that inspired me, albeit for a season, I have met good friends whose journeys will forever be linked to mine. I have not only braved 20 mile per hour gusts that makes the wind that makes the winter more frigid, I have also braved the winds of life that have knocked me down while I continue to stand. I have made a home of this unfamiliar land, a land that has helped me grow into something unimaginable to my old self. We have with us today for the first time the president of the school board for Montgomery County Public Schools. Ms. Shebra Evans was elected to the school board in 2016. For the first time, she has served this community and our students well. She is now the president of the board and doing great things for us and for our children. I'm not going to bother to read everything that we have here on her, but I will tell you um, only because I know that we have about six dozen women that would be upset with me if I did not acknowledge that she is an active member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Theta Omega Omega Chapter, located in Silver Spring, Maryland. Ms. Evans, her husband, and two daughters live in Montgomery County, attend Montgomery County schools, and she is a tremendous advocate for our children and our communities. Our speaker, Ms. Shebra Evans.
First and foremost, I want to give praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you to Reverend Moultrie for the invitation to come and speak today. I also want to acknowledge the Board of Trustees, the Deacon Board, and the entire congregation. It is my pleasure to speak at the baccalaureate service today. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the events taking place in our country and around the world. We are reading, hearing, and watching in horror about the recent deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and countless others at the hands of law enforcement. The black community is no stranger to institutional and structural racism. The recent events require that we all speak out. In my capacity as the president on the Montgomery County Board of Education, it was imperative that my colleagues and I speak out. The Montgomery County Board of Education put out a statement on May 30th. We felt that as leaders of the largest school system in the state, charged with supporting and, and guiding the development of our children's future, that we could not be silent. Our anger and sorrow won't bring back any of the victims, but it has renewed our purpose our mission to provide every student what they need to thrive. I ask you, the members of Mount Calvary Baptist Church, to please join us in advocating for supporting, loving, and protecting all of our students every day. The individuals being honored today are extremely blessed to have a church congregation such as Mount Calvary Baptist Church. It is clear that not even a time such as this would defer a 50-year tradition of celebrating graduates. The baccalaureate worship experience is recognizing high school students, college graduates, and recipients receiving advanced degrees. Congratulations to you all. I was told the teenagers came up with the theme for today's service. Blind faith, all 2020, period. I like that. COVID-19 has gripped the nation, and I thought your theme was very befitting for a time such as now. Our governor, Larry Hogan, proclaimed a state of emergency and health emergency in the state of Maryland on March 5th, renewed the proclamation on March 17th, and renewed it again on April 10th, and it still exists. We have watched the number of cases in Maryland increase to 58,404, and in Montgomery County, the confirmed cases are up to 12,818. At least that was the number when I last checked. And the number of deaths continue to rise. The stay-at-home order took effect to protect us from anyone infected with the virus because it can be transmitted through a cough, a sneeze, or even while talking. I'll tell you what, this is allergy season and I cough a lot. And right now people are giving me the side glance because the virus, I could be a carrier. 
We were advised to keep a social distance of six feet between ourselves and others and avoid crowds, avoid handshaking, avoid hugging, avoid non-essential travel, no church, work from home, and begin distance learning for elementary, secondary, high school, university, and college students. As of June 3rd, the state of Maryland moved into stage two of recovery. Masks should be worn in indoor public areas, in retail stores, and on public transportation. Uncertainty can tend to make people anxious. We don't know when we will have a, when, when we will have a vaccine. We don't know when it will be safe to open schools. Most importantly, we don't know what our new normal will look like in the coming days, weeks, months, or in the foreseeable future. There are so many unanswered questions. The things I am certain of and if you were here with me today in the church, I believe I would get an amen, is that one, God is with us. And two, he made a promise for our life and that was never to leave nor forsake us. I found a scripture that I wanted to share with you today. Please find your Bible or just listen as I read Genesis chapter eight, verses six through 19 in the New International Version. After 40 days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find nowhere to perch because there, were, there was water all over the surface of the earth. So he returned to Noah in the ark he reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. He waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again. But this time, he did not return to him. By the first day of the first month of Noah's 601st year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on land came out of the ark, one kind after another. So I know you're saying to me, so Shepherd, why are you reading this scripture? What is it about Noah? I use Noah as an example for two reasons. One, everyone knows the story of Noah and the ark, regardless of your age. I thought it would be easy to follow along. But two, the second and most important reason was because Noah's life changed drastically while he lived on the ark and even after the flood. His life and his family's life were never ever going to be the same. We are in a similar situation. Some of our lives have forever changed. People have lost their job, Many have lost their businesses along with their retirement and perhaps even a loved one. For now, we cannot congregate in large groups and we should continue to wear masks. We will have a new normal, but guess what? In spite of everything, 
every individual, in, individual here today being celebrated was able to receive their diploma. Our undergraduate and graduate students were able to earn their degrees and advanced degrees. God is good. But getting back to Noah. Noah got through his uncertain times. The dove bringing back the olive leaf was one indication that things were starting to get back to a new normal. The last time Noah sent the dove out, it didn't return to the ark. He used those things to guide him in addition to his blind faith. We came to recognize some important individuals, so I won't take up too much of your time. I'll leave you with these three things as we go through these uncertain times to help guide your blind faith. One, expect to face trials. All roads have bumps. Your road is no exception. Just know that your trials will give you strength to endure the journey. Number two, seek the guidance of others. My advice is to get a mentor, but remember that no one can walk this journey but you. Believe me when I tell you the journey is a whole lot easier when you have someone that can hold you accountable and help direct you on the right path. Remember this, your mentor does not need to be a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. They do not need to appear on the who's who's list. Don't ignore the people already around you. They're here, willing to help support you, build your leadership capacity, and give you advice. Three, concentrate on things that have significance. The pandemic showed us that a lot of things are out of our control. I'll let you figure out what's significant to you, but for me, it's helping others. The pandemic has laid bare the many inequities that exist for a lot of families, in particular in the black community. Many adults and children are in dire need. My husband and our girls are donating and volunteering in a variety of ways that has brought on new meaning to our lives. Find what's significant to you and do it. Don't forget to take care of your mind, body, and soul. I know you don't know your future. None of us do. But keep the blind faith all 2020, period. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations to you all. It's my honor to be here today, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care. Good afternoon, Mount Calvary. My name is Antoinette Walker, and I would like to congratulate and honor our junior ushers. We have two this year. The first is Nina Kennedy, and the other is Anissa Bryant. Both of these students have served the Usher Board Ministry with, through ded dedication and support, and we are so proud of their, all of their accomplishments. We wish them the best as they pursue their higher educational goals. Each student will receive a $100 scholarship award as well as a love gift. Thank you. My name is Natasha Hammond, and I'm here on behalf of the Youth Choir to present Sister Anissa Bryant with an Amazon gift card in appreciation of her participation with the Youth Choir. May God bless you in your educational pursuits. I am Deacon Kennedy, and it is my pleasure to present this presentation to Nina Kennedy for her dedication and her work with our Sunday Children's Church, and she will be receiving this. We are so grateful to God for the message and for the messenger. Oh, wasn't that a powerful, powerful word using the simple example of Noah's ark um, to work with the calamity that we're in now. Uh, but knowing that we're going to leave this boat and we're going to go our several different ways and God's going to be with each and every one of us. You guys are graduating from different schools, you have different career paths, different futures ahead of you. 
I know you're not gathered here in front of me today as we normally are, but wherever you are, I just want to remind you that God is always with you. He'll never leave you. I want to share just a little bit of scripture with you before I pray that I think is quite fitting because as you leave, you got to keep in mind the word of God from Psalm 139. It says, whether shall I go from thy spirit or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, thy hand shall lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Be with us, God. We love you and we honor you. We appreciate you, God. We leave the, 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 the land of the known, those things that we have worked through this entire school year and these previous years to get to this place of matriculating. God, we, we've worked through all of those things and now we launch off into the deep, going different places, different ways, different jobs, different situations, even new schools, God. But wherever we go, there's no place we can go that you aren't already there. There's no place we can go that you haven't already been there and that you won't be with us, holding us, guiding us, teaching us, God. And we're so grateful to you. No matter where we go or what we do, you have promised to always be with us. And we thank you. So, God, we bring before you today virtually all of our graduates. From law school, from advanced degrees and undergraduate degrees from high school, even from lower degrees, God, we bring them before you. We bring every one of our students, God. We have done all our best to pour into them a foundation. And so, God, we pray that we have done enough, that we have done what you asked us to do and that that foundation sticks, God. So as they continue on their journey, even as they come into situations and circumstances that they don't understand, things that, that they can't uh, quite figure out, God, I just pray that they'll always know without a doubt that you're with them. God, these are your children. You only lent them to us. They're yours. And we know how much you love them and how much they love you, God. Hold them, O oh God, in the hollow of your hand. Continue to guide them and lead them and direct them. We know, God, that they can be a little stubborn sometimes. We know, God, that they want to try their, their own way sometimes. They want to do things the way they see fit sometimes, God. We know how they are. We know who they are, God. And so do you, Father. So be patient with them. Love them. Guide them, God knowing that they'll get through this and they'll always turn back to you. And as you lead them into that place of greatness, that place that you have for them, we pray, God, that they'll never forget you, that they'll always be willing to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We pray, God, that even as they soar to the highest heights of the corporate world, of government, of the medical fields, whatever path it, it's on, God, the military, wherever that is, God, as they soar, we pray that they know that they're not soaring under their own power, but it's you, you that's sustaining them and keeping them, God. Oh, God, we do thank you for each and every family represented today. We thank you, God, for how these families have loved on these young people have taken care of them and provided for them, God. We know that we can't do for them what you've done for us, God, but even as we try, we thank you, God, for the example that you've set for us. Bless these families, God. We pray that you would just give back to them tenfold all that they've sacrificed for these young people, God. We pray, God, for the one that goes forth today a little timid and afraid a little shy 
we pray God that you just lift them up reassure them reaffirm in them the great love that you have for them and all of the power and authority that you have placed within them we pray God that you would just reassure in each of these families that as these children move on that they're not losing family members God but they are advancing the kingdom so God we pray that even as these children leave us to go to different cities and different churches different places to do your will and your work that you would even provide here replacements for them. Send new ones, God, young and old, that we might be able to continue the work that you have set us on the path to do. God, we thank you, we love you, we honor you, we appreciate you, Father. Now bless us all, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now, Unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the all-wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power this day and forevermore. Amen.